advertising session of Test and Express. Today at this session, I'm in conversation with Manu Lovrano, the co-founder and CEO of Envoning. Manu has been in the drone industry since 2012. He has also served as the president of the Swiss Drone Industry Association and as a board member of the Global UTM Association. Welcome to the show, Manu. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Baisali. Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you. So today we are going to talk about the necessity of low altitude traffic detection. So let's jump right in. Yeah. Uh, my first question is, how do drones avoid colliding with birds, aeroplanes, and an occasional superhero flying around in the sky? Can low altitude traffic detection systems like in Woli be the superhero sidekick that saves the day? Uh, that's a very good question. Thank you. <laughs> so we really say it like this. For us in Woli, it's the solution that allows drone to fly uh, without crashing, especially against helicopters, airplanes, which are flying and operating in the same area where drones are flying. Um, we were mentioning uh, uh, a superhero. I think that right. Molly could be like the Professor X uh, of, uh, <laughs> of, uh, of, you know, with the, how would you call it, the Cinebro? You yeah. know, that you can see everybody with his thinking and so on. We can see all their planes in the, in the very big range right. and provide this information to the operator. Professor X is nice. So, in case, if, if the Involi system could talk, what type of air traffic would it brag about detecting? Would it be like eagles, UFOs, or, you know, well, just regular planes? Just regular planes for the moment. <laughs> but, I mean, we have a vision where actually we want to digitalize all the air traffic. Right. We start with the cooperative air traffic because for us it's the most important to see. I mean, whatever there is, some people inside an aircraft, it's better, you know, to not crash against them. Right. But then eventually we would like to go uh, far beyond that and really detect anything that is used in the sky. Okay, so right now it's only focused on cooperative aircraft. So right. if there is a, a person who's in a parachute or something, it will not detect? Correct. With our current system, we can. But the, typically what we can do is integrating other vendor sensors right. so that the information goes to our platform and any way we can uh, allow to see that. So another thing that we do also is that we have an extension to our receiver. So not only we can see ADS-B, mode S, mode AC air traffic, but also UAT in the US, Flarm in Europe and also remote ID broadcast, uh, whatever it's used. That's cool. So how do you detect uh, cooperative aircraft? Do you have like a remote ID system or an ADSB attached to it? Yes, exactly. So for the for the air traffic, it's really uh, we detect the messages coming from the transponder. While for remote ID, we have another antenna that detects over Wi-Fi frequency the messages coming from the remote ID broadcast system. That's it. Okay. So moving on to my next question, can you provide an estimate of the budget that would be required to implement an Involi system? And uh, how does it compare with other traffic detection solutions? Yeah, that's again a very good question and the, and the answer where it's a bit complex because uh, we're uh, evolving today uh, in a world where there are not yet drones flying everywhere. Right. So uh, today, unfortunately, a drone operator have to purchase our receiver. Uh, this is not our favorite business model. Okay. The idea for us would be more to actually install our receivers everywhere and then provide a directly a stream of air traffic data to our uh, uh, customer. But today it's not yet possible. So uh, a drone operator will need to purchase uh, one, two, five receivers depending on the area that they have uh, uh, to, to cover. It's a couple of grand, a bit more for each receiver. And then there is a subscription fee because we are doing a lot of data processing on our right. side as well with the massive amount of data that we are receiving. But in the future, my idea would be we, we, we put our receivers everywhere in a certain yeah. area and you just get a stream from us and then you pay a subscription fee to the, to the stream. That does make sense. So uh, my next question would be, what type of thing? You know, uh, can you like talk about more how drone operators need to purchase receivers to use the Involi system and how many receivers are typically required for optimal performance? Yeah, good question. So um, if we take a, a typical uh, US uh, city like uh, Dallas in Texas, right. with uh, something between five or seven receivers, we are able to cover the whole metropolitan area. Oh, okay. So it's really, it's not like you need to put a ton of receivers everywhere, just with those one you are able to detect ADS-B, mode S and mode AC air traffic, oh. UAT as well. But also with our system, we are able to validate ADS-B. So we use a process called multilateration and we can really confirm that the ADS-B air traffic is really there. 
And so once you, you purchase these receivers, you are fine. You can do all the operation in that particular area, which is quite big. Then of course, if it is an area with the mountains and valley, you will need more receivers because uh, of course we need to do a coverage on line on site. And uh, yeah, you need more receivers. <laughs> All right. So if you could you please share like one anecdote or a, a story of how Invoni system is being used today for what kind of application in real world at the moment? Yes. So I cannot disclose the name of customers, right. etc. But let's say that um, in, in the US, especially, we talk a lot about BV loss. And then actually yeah. we discovered that it's a sort of a EV loss with yeah. the uh, observer looking around in the sky and doing the dirty job of actually mm -hmm. checking the sky. So actually when you come with our system, you don't need observers anymore. You you actually can automatize all the part of uh, checking their traffic. And so this is the anecdote actually, we can uh, do the same. We can actually do real BV loss with our system and uh, remove the observer from the loop actually. So is there any application that you could maybe highlight? Like what is it used for? Is it for, you know, uh, inspection repeatable operations or is it for delivery operations like who are using uh in and for what purpose if correct that's a very good question so it regardless of application where our system shine is when you fly autonomous right and bv loss that's the two things okay so whatever you do if you want to fly without uh, operators or without the uh, observers that's where we shine and of course beyond vision line of sight. that makes sense all right, so how do you think, uh, you know, uh, the industry is going to look like, say, five years from now? Do you think there will be more autonomous flights? How do you see it paving up? Oh, there will be millions of drones flying <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> of course, this is what we look for. Right. Then uh, the question will be, does the regulatory framework will allow us yes. to do so? I think that from a commercial point of view, everyone is very excited to go in that direction. So it's really a matter of, are we, will we be able to unblock the regulatory situation with the technology that we have today or not? If yes, there will be drones flying everywhere. We will uh, have other matter to uh, explore, like the social acceptability of yes, drones, that is so the noise and so on and so forth. But at least we will be exploring that. Definitely. I think we have already seen a lot of awareness and adoption at this point, and it's only growing from uh, ignore. So again, thank you so much for your time, Manu. It was great having a conversation with you and understanding how low altitude traffic detection is going to help in the future. So thanks once again. Thank you, we'll bye see bye. you all in the next episode of Next Gen Express. Thank you. Bye-bye.